Hi and welcome back to Functional Scala. In this video, I will discuss pure functions. In functional programming, you focus on results rather than changing things. You call functions that perform the operations and return a result. The goal is to make data immutable. So, in functional world, you create functions rather than statements. This reduces the risk of side effects in the code. Side effects are unexpected results in a program caused by changing something. The results that can corrupt the logic of a program. For example, a side effect would be a function that modifies a variable or data structure. Functions need to do one thing and that is to return a result plain and simple. Pure functions are important facet of functional programming. So what is a pure function? Well, a pure function should be referentially transparent and without any side effects. But what does that mean? Referential transparency means that an expression will always lead to the same result when provided by same arguments. And that's the important part. The point is that you keep things pure by avoiding side effects and it doesn't matter where an expression is located in the program. For it to be referentially transparent, it cannot change a program's behavior. Take this example, the expression. I will go ahead and just add a line here, A plus B. Okay, we'll see both variables are immutable. Now you can take the expression and create a new method. So I will just go back here and create this new function. This is a pure function because no matter where you use the expression A plus B in a program, you can use C instead and it won't have any side effect on rest of the program. The expression A plus B therefore is referentially transparent when you use C. This example was rather simple. Let us take a look at another example. Suppose you want to write a tool to suggest books based on Goodreads review. You may be tempted to write something like this. Create a class book with name and Goodreads score. First, create a method to print out the recommended book name. And the next method is to compare the books and provide the result to our first method. Let us try to execute the above code with two books. So I will pick up two of the most popular books for Scala. First is Programming in Scala with Goodreads score of 4.19 and Second one is functional programming in Scala with score of 4.44. And with no surprises, when I pass above two books to our method, the recommended book is functional programming in Scala. While the above code solves our initial problem of recommending a book, but it has two problems. The method returns unit rather than a useful result and it is producing a side effect thus making it hard to, reduce, to reuse. The code can only be used to recommend book name and nowhere else. The code can recommend a better book only between two books. What if you want a recommendation out of n books? I will try and refactor the method compare book so instead of returning unit, I want to return the instance of recommended book. Let us see how this small change has made our life easier. 
I will create a list of popular books in Scala. The first two entries remains the same and I will an enter another entry of Scala for impatient. Now I will show you something really useful and really fun. I want to show you the use of reduce left. Reduce left will compare all the elements of the list to fetch the final result. Here it will compare all the books in the list to get a book with best reviews. If you don't know about reduce function, don't be bothered about it. Try to understand the concept of pure functions here. I have created another detailed video to explain reduce. And here, when we execute the code with no surprises, the recommendation is functional programming in Scala. Though all the books in the list are great resources and you can pick up any of them to explore Scala in great detail. So here we got rid of any side effects and we got a result with expected behavior. I hope you enjoyed this concept of pure functions. The concept is really useful. So altogether, a pure function has many advantages. These properties give us an unprecedented ability to reason about our code. For example, any input validation or calculation is easier to isolate. Caching the result is possible when functions are deterministic. And interactions with the world becomes easier to control and test. Let us drill down on pure functions once again. Pure functions are independent of any other changes in the program. They must be referentially transparent and they must always result in the same value as long as its arguments receive the same values. They must be inoculated from and devoid of any side effects, meaning that there can be no unexpected changes to other program elements as a result of poor coding. We'll continue to explore much more Scala. Please do give me a thumbs up if you like the video. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Please post your comments and suggestions.